this is the second part of our two-part tutorial on calculating skirt board drag and the power required to overcome it. We will review material spillage and how to avoid it, how to avoid too much skirt board drag, and how to avoid the power required to overcome too much skirt board drag. Now we will discuss some key terminology that will be of assistance to you in designing and implementing skirt board systems. As we have done throughout our video series, we are taking the terminology from the Conveyor Equipment Manufacturers Association Conveyor Design Guide. Here we will be looking at a 35 degree troughing idler with material in it according to uh, the SEMA recommended maximum fill factor. What are our terms? We look at material surcharge angle. This is called alpha. We look at the idler angle, which we call beta. We look at a very important parameter here, C, which SEMA defines as minimum edge distance, belt width, we define as B. C equals 0 0.055 times B plus 9 tenths of an inch. Once we know the minimum edge distance and the geometry defined by this arc and the, and the trapezoid beneath it, we can calculate what SEMA recommends as the maximum number of square feet on this particular trough. Once we know the SEMA recommended maximum cross section, we can compare the design rate for our given set of parameters against that SEMA recommendation. We need to know the rate handling rate, which is expressed in tons per hour. We need to know the bulk density, the bulk density, which is expressed in pounds per cubic foot. And we need to know the belt speed, the belt speed, which is expressed in feet per minute. How do we calculate actual design cross-section? Let's uh, say for this example, we're going to be considering that our material has a handling rate of 400 tons per hour. It's stone, so our bulk density is 90 pounds per cubic foot. And let's say that the belt speed is 300 feet per minute. 400 tons per hour times 2,000 pounds per ton divided by 60 minutes per hour times 90 pounds per cubic foot times 300 feet per minute. And we get these numbers, 800,000 divided by 1620, which equals one half of a square foot. Rulemeca Corporation has developed a program which enables us to calculate required belt pull and required conveyor drive power. Displayed before you, you can see the parameters which I mentioned previously. I've also programmed in a material surcharge angle of 25 degrees. You can see that for these parameters, the program gives us a, dr a conveyor drive power requirement of 6.9 horsepower. The black line on the top of the cross section represents the SEMA maximum recommended cross section for the geometry given. The red curved line shows the upper limit of the design cross section. In other words, this is the cross-section that our parameters has yielded. On display are the SEMA standard edge distance, which in this case is 2.6 inches, and the SEMA recommended maximum allowable cross-section, which is 0.7 square feet. Here you can see that the program has calculated 0.5 square feet as the actual cross-section. 
Notice that the edge distance of our design rate is 4.4 inches. We will use this program to illustrate how to avoid certain pitfalls. Let me elaborate on the example that was given previously by saying that this conveyor has a length of 150 feet. The drive is at the head end. And let's say this conveyor was designed and installed uh, with a 10 horsepower drive system. And let's say that the conveyor is continuously fed uh, using a skirt board with a length of 12 feet and a material depth of two inches. As I showed before, 400 tons per hour with a 300 foot per minute belt speed with 90 pound per cubic foot material requires 6.9 horsepower and the cross section, the actual design cross section would be 69% of the SEMA recommendation. 6.9 horsepower is less than 10 horsepower and 69% of course is less than 100%. Let's say production is under pressure to handle more tons per hour on this existing conveyor. What do we do? Well, in fact, as I'll show in a minute with the program, 575 tons per hour will actually uh, require 8.3 horsepower to drive it, which is less than 10, and 575 tons per hour will completely fill the trough and we'll be running at 100% of the SEMA recommended fill factor. Let's say that there's continued pressure on operations to move more tons. We will explore what happens if we try to move 800 tons per hour. In fact, you'll see that at 800 tons per hour, our cross section is 138% of the SEMA recommendation, but the power is 9.9 .9 horsepower. 9.9 .9 is less than 10, so theoretically we could do it, but 138 is larger than 100% and spillage problems would occur in this instance. This is the screen we looked at earlier and it shows 400 tons per hour on a 30 inch wide belt. It requires 6.9 horsepower and it will fill 69% of the SEMA recommended cross section. If we increase the throughput to 575 tons per hour, keeping all other parameters the same, our horsepower requirement increases to 8.3 horsepower and our fill factor is now 100%. If we were to increase the throughput rate to 800 tons per hour, we have kept our required horsepower below our installed base of 10 horsepower. However, with the material filling the cross-section nearly to the edge, this is highly likely to be a situation in which spillage will occur. If our facility is challenged with handling 800 tons per hour on this conveyor belt, how can we handle the circumstances? We know that 400 tons per hour with a 300 foot per minute belt speed was no problem. The cross-section was less than the SEMA recommended maximum and the power was less than the 10 horsepower. In fact, we know that we could move the rate up to 575 tons per hour at 300 feet per minute without revising the drive. If on the other hand, we now have to handle 800 tons per hour, if we want to maintain the belt speed at 300 feet per minute and we are at 138% of the SEMA recommended cross-section, one idea might be to fully skirt the conveyor. Rather than having a 12-foot skirt zone, let's make a 150-foot long skirt. Unfortunately, if that were the case, as you'll see in a minute, we would have two inches of, of uh, material all along the skirt rubbing against the steel skirt, and that would be very costly in terms of power. In fact, it calculates out to be 18.7 horsepower. <clears throat> Another alternative to handling 800 tons per hour would be to speed the conveyor to 415 feet per minute 
we load this into our program, we keep our skirt at 12 feet long. And I'm happy to say the answer comes out to be 12.1 horsepower and a cross section which is at 100% of the SEMA recommendation. If in fact it's necessary to move 800 tons per hour on a 30 inch wide belt with 35 degree troughing idlers, one would be tempted to fully skirt the 150 foot long conveyor belt. But a penalty would be tremendous because as shown here, throughout the full length of the conveyor, the material drag on the skirt boards would be two inches. And notice that the power requirement jumps to a whopping 18.7 horsepower. Note also that the maintenance on these boards would be significant. Compare that with the option of speeding the conveyor from 300 feet per minute to 415 feet per minute. Note that 800 tons per hour can be handled on a 30 inch wide belt with the same troughing idlers as before at the faster speed and it would adhere to the 100% of the SEMA recommended cross section. Edge distance of 2.6 inches would be held. The power would increase to 12.1 horsepower. Let's now wrap up this presentation and draw some important conclusions. What have we learned? We learned that the conveyor described previously that was handling 400 tons per hour at a rate of 300 feet per minute required 6.9 horsepower. If this particular conveyor were to run 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and let's say the utility charged 10 cents per kilowatt hour, running this conveyor would cost $4,500 per year. We know that the 30 inch wide belt could accommodate a higher tonnage rate because when we looked at the fill factor, we knew that uh, SEMA would allow us to put more tonnage on it. And we know that if we run at 575 tons per hour at 300 feet per minute, we will use 8.3 horsepower to drive the belt under those conditions. And the annual cost of that would be about $5,400. Now, when we attempted to handle 800 tons per hour, we had a challenge. And so the way we attempted to meet the challenge was to either fully skirt the conveyor or to speed up the conveyor. If we fully skirt the conveyor, 800 tons per hour fully skirted would have a power requirement of 18.7, which would have an annual cost of about $12,000 per year, annual power cost. On the other hand, if we needed to carry the 800 tons per hour and we sped up the conveyor, we invested in a new drive system with a faster belt speed, we could have a fill factor of 100%, which theoretically means we won't have struggles with spillage and our power requirement will be 12.1 horsepower, which will cost 79 hundred dollars per year in electrical power. Converting power usage into electrical power usage, in other words, converting mechanical power usage into electrical power consumption, and then converting that into dollars, will be the subject of our next video. We hope you enjoyed this video. For more information on conveyor design tips, please go to RebeccaCorp.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.